click the bell icon to turn on notifications. In creating an Altrix workflow, we have three main components. First is our tools. They represent each step in the process. To add a tool to our workflow, drag it into the tool palette and drop it to a blank space in our canvas. Clicking on a tool in the palette also shows a sort summary of the tool and a hyperlink to a workflow example. This will be useful if you want to know more about the different functionalities of the tool and its configurations. You can also add a tool by right-clicking on a blank space on our canvas. Click Insert, select a tool category, and click on the tool that you need. Each tool in the workflow has an anchor. This serves as the inputs and outputs of data from each tool. Each tool has a different number of anchor. We will use these anchors to create a connection between each tool, allowing the data to flow from input data source to our preparation tool. By clicking the input anchor of each tool, you can view data coming into the tool by looking at the results window. Likewise, to view the data coming out of the tool, meaning it has already applied the step process indicated on the tool, click on the output anchor. Let's try to create our workflow. Let's start by adding an input data to our canvas. Click on the in slash out tool category and drag the input tool to the canvas. This tool will bring in a file or a database connection to our workflow. To add a file, click on the arrow on the configuration window. This will open a data connections window that shows you the recent files you have used, your saved data, the file, data sources, and gallery. Both the File and Data Sources tab lists all the types of files and data connections supported by Altrix. To add a file, you can click on Select a File and navigate to a file in your data folder or drag and drop a file from your File Explorer. If you choose an Excel file, it will direct you to this window. You can either select a sheet and or specify a range of cells that you need, or you can import the sheet names only. Since we will use the data inside the sheet, we selected the latter. Click on OK to apply. The Options section will be different for each file type. It lets you specify how the file will be read. On our Excel file, we first have the record limit. You can add a specific number of rows if you only want a sample of that data. The file format, the table or query, in this case it contains our sheet name, Search subdirectories in only used if you are importing multiple files from a certain path. Output file name as file adds the name of your file or your whole file path to your data. First row contains data is for files that do not contain the header. And the indicated row where you want to start the data import from. The preview box below contains the first 100 records, which can be fewer for wider files. To review the complete data, let's add in a Browse tool. The data will be shown in the Results window once we run the workflow. On the Results window, you have a count of row, records, and the size of the data. If you only wanted to see select fields, you can show or hide it by selecting the field on the upper left of the window. You can also view the contents of a cell on the Cell Viewer and show if it has white space. You can also save this data as a new file by clicking on the Save icon or copy it by clicking on the Copy button. The metadata type shows the type, size, and source of each field column in your data set. A colored data quality bar displays at the top of each column of data in the results window. Red, not OK. The column contains values with leading or trailing white space. Yellow, null. The column contains no values. Gray, empty. The column contains strings with no values. And green, OK. The column contains values without leading or trailing white spaces. If you wanted to check the data for a specific value, type it in the search bar on the upper right and hit Enter. All rows associated with that value on one of their fields will be shown. You can also sort and filter individual columns. To do so, Click on the three dots on the field name 
and click on either Filter or Sort. These Filter and Sort changes will not be a permanent step on your workflow unless you apply the tools to the canvas. This will add in the Filter or Sort tool with the appropriate configurations that you have applied. Using the Browse tool also allows you to look at the data profile of each column. This is available in the Browse configuration window. If you haven't selected any fields from the Browse window, it will show a tabular list of top occurring values of each column, including the numbers of instances where it was available on the data. Selecting a specific field in the Browse window will give you more insight on the column. The information will vary depending on the data type of the column. In our example, we have a numeric field called Zip. The first chart contains the data quality summary of the field, showing if a certain percentage of it has null, empty, or trailing white space. The next chart has the value statistics of the field. The bar chart has the grouped range of available data and shows which range has more recurring values. Since this is a numeric value, it also shows us some simple statistical values such as the minimum, maximum, and average value of the data. Lastly is a list of top values. Let's take a look at a string field and see its profile difference. We still have the same data quality chart, but we have a bit of a difference on the statistical chart. Instead, this makes use of the length of the strings and shows the shortest and longest value that it has, and also has the first numeric value and the last. It also shows a value chart with the most frequent value. Another way of adding in data to Altrix is via text input. It allows you to create a new stream of data without using a file or a database. You can manually type in data from the configuration box. For example, I can add in a simple lookup for state code and state name by typing the headers on the top row and adding in the data below. Altrix also automatically converts tabulated data as text input if you are using a table from a website. You can copy it directly from the web and paste it to Altrix. It can also come from the browse window or an Excel file. You can also import data from other files and data connections. If you wanted to add the module's runtime to your workflow, like if you're using it as headers for your report, you can add a date time now input tool. This will add a field with a date time format as to when the workflow was run. Like we previously mentioned, these will not affect anything in your data sources. The data that Altrix reads in will be untouched unless you use an output data tool. The output data tool allows us to write the results of our workflow to a new file type or a new data source. To configure the tool, select a file path then type in a file name and select a file type and click Save. If you are saving it to an Excel file, it will prompt you to specify a sheet name. If you want to replace an existing file, you can write the same file type with the same file name and location. To output the file, run the workflow. The results window will show a link to the file that was created. The options section also lets you configure max records to be input on the file. Select the file format and select Output Options. In this Excel file, you can append the new data to the sheet, delete the current data on the sheet, and add your new output data, which overwrites the whole sheet, or creates a new one. The rest of the selections are used if you are saving to a SQL database or to different data connections. If you set an automated name slash file for your output file, you can select the field that contains the file name or the file path by clicking on the checkbox selecting the action to be applied, and mapping the field name. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.